Welcome. Today we'll be practicing the spiritual disciplines of Lectio Divina and Visio Divina as we begin session two of our seven week contemplative series during Lent. I hope you had an opportunity to view the first video in this series. If not, you need to go back and take a look at that one because in the first video, I give you an overview of the series and some very basic instructions for how to do Lectio Divina and Visio Divina. So in the subsequent sessions, uh, I won't be providing all those details. Um, my name is Kathy Light, and my partner in this series is my pastor and friend, Reverend Tim Trussell Smith. He will be joining us in just a few minutes. And we will be doing the practice of Lectio Divina and Visio Divina and sharing any insights that we receive through those practices. And um, we hope that you will do it along with us. If the pauses are not long enough for you, you need more time in the silence, just pause the video and take as much time as you need. Uh, I hope you'll remember there's no wrong way of doing this. And uh, I hope you'll be able to relax and just open yourself to the spirit as you um, practice this or perhaps learn how to do these practices. Uh, we are with First Christian Church in Valparaiso, Indiana, and we're glad that you're joining us uh, today and hopefully for the whole series. It is seven weeks, um, one day a week. So uh, please uh, stay with us and feel free to leave comments for us uh, whenever you have to leave the video. And so now we're going to begin. The reading is Exodus 18 through 22. Exodus 15, 18 through 22. Hear the word of God and listen for the Spirit's movement. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his chariot drivers went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water.
The Lord will reign forever and ever. When the horses of Pharaoh, with his chariots and his chariot drivers, went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Tim, maybe you and I could take a minute or two to kind of share what we received mm -hmm. during our silence. Do you want to start? Um, sure, I can start. I was actually very surprised because <laughs> I, I had read this prior to the recording. Mm -hmm. um, but what struck me right away as you were reading was at the very end and, and it was the two words, no water. Mm. And, and in a story that's full of water, that really surprised me. Yeah. Um, and so then as I sat with it afterwards in the silence, I, I realized it's helping me understand that, that I am in a period of spiritual dryness. Mm. And, and what that means. Mm -hmm. And I think that that image of no water is helping me understand some things going on within me. Um, that, that dryness, that, that need, that, uh, that's beyond desire, but need. Um, like without it, I will die. Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. intense, that's what no water can do to a person. Right. Um, right. And I think for Lent, that's um, maybe uh, a guiding point for me as I'm 
putting all these things together, all the Lectio Divina and mm -hmm. the Visio Divina from last week, from our first mm -hmm. session, mm -hmm. and now this, um, it's helping me understand a little more about myself, which mm -hmm. I see Lent as a time of reflection, mm -hmm. finding out what's going on in yourself. Yeah. And, and I think I needed that image to understand some of the stuff that's going on within me that's triggering my feelings yeah. and, and yeah. thoughts. So yeah. it's something I need to spend more time with. Right. Uh, but it was a good image for me. Yeah. I needed that. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm, and it just kind of goes to the point of, and, and I'm loving that we're doing these and, have, and, and we're thinking about the fact that some folks who are watching these videos don't do practices like Lectio and don't do these kind of practices as much. And so I, I was actually thinking about that, and it you know, goes to the point, um, kind of talking about what these are a little bit, um, and that you're going to go back and bring this with you into another practice and into another time, mm -hmm. and maybe the same thing or maybe a slightly different practice, and it's the, it's the repetition and the consistency that allows us to keep on pulling back those layers, right? And yes. that's so important. And um, for, for me, and the reason, again, I was thinking, and that's what I want to point to for me is, I was thinking. Um, and we were, you know, we're in the middle of, we are doing this recording session, I'm very grateful for, um, but as I was talking to you beforehand, that we're, I'm a little bit in this kind of rushed, just schedule-wise, mm -hmm. and I have several things going on. I couldn't, you know, with, my reading and then even listening to you, I was not at that place that I definitely got to last week, and I usually get to, um, more often than not, I should say, where it came through that was clearly an insight that was much more from the spirit. I was much more in my head. And mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say that I even really had one of those words jump out at me. Okay. Um, and that's a message in itself, like we're talking about. And what is it you need to hear? And for me, it's often, yeah, you're really... You're really uh, doing a lot, and it's much about action, and you're not actually settling down and centering. Although I have had some good times of that lately, just right now, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Yeah, it's okay it to is. be there. Um, in my thinking, it was funny that actually no water stood out to me as well, and I wasn't Maybe sure why. why. Yeah, and so when you said that, I would be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> but honestly, I just was like, no, it wasn't the, the real clear insight it was sure. the, it was it was much more my own you know noticing in a mm -hmm. sense right and there's a difference to those two things which is unless you practice you kind of don't notice that in, mm -hmm. until you've done it for a while you go oh yeah there's a difference when it really is an insight and when it really is like no you're in your own kind of consciousness you know and anyway so mm -hmm. that did and then when and the words and, and the image of just setting off into the desert from this really momentous thing so that was, again, it's more of an intellectual insight, but it struck me, and mm -hmm. I'll mention it, that they're leaving what is the moment which is the most profound moment in the story of the Jewish faith. The Passover is the central thing. It's Easter mm -hmm. within the Old Testament, right? right? And right. Easter, in fact, is the new Passover, so in some sense they're related. They're moving off yeah. into, it's like Moses says, nope, go on, keep going. <laughs> This was very important, but we can't stay here. So anyway, but that's, again, I think, yeah. I'll point it out, but I think it was still more of an intellectual thing than a real, and but I'll sit okay. with it. And yeah, and it yeah. still might be something I want to go back and explore, but it's, yeah. Yeah, just to notice sort of how is your own spirit working and how settled it is or unsettled or mm -hmm. distracted. It, that in itself is a helpful thing to notice in your practice, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank yeah. you. Um, we're going to move into uh, our next discipline, which is Visio Divina. And again, if you have not watched the first video in this series, uh, you might want to go back to that. So you'll have some instruction, some very basic instruction. Uh, we're just going to show you a picture. And it will correspond to this scripture reading that uh, we just did together and you'll look at the whole picture and um, and then notice anything that grabs your attention about the picture 
um, or how the picture is making you feel and just sit with it. So there will be some time for some silence while you look at the picture and then Tim and I will come back and share any insight that we received. Um, again, kind of center yourself to clear your mind, clear your heart. Um, it might be a very busy day and mm -hmm. you've got somewhere to be in 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, days are like that. Um, this might be something you want to come back to or give it whatever time you can. And you may have plenty of time, in which case pause the recording and take as much time as you need. So we'll set up the picture now. Welcome back, and now uh, Tim and I will kind of share with each other and with you folks uh, any insights that we received through these prints. Tim, would you like to go first? Yeah, and and I was really grateful you you know said to the folks out there, you know, take that time to center, and then we did off camera mm -hmm. take that little time and stuff, and I was able to get back into that space a little bit more. And so in this case, when I looked at the picture. I actually really got, I got drawn really quickly to this particular thing, and it's the there's one only one weapon of all there's all the soldiers and the horses and stuff that were you know that are drowned in the water. This violent episode, mm -hmm. and that always troubles me is God's violence in parts of the scriptures, right? So I was wrestled with, and but was what I was drawn to is the picture there in the upper right corner, um, being swept away as a guy who's holding still onto that that spiked mace, I guess it might be, and I was realizing, and, and for at least the thing that came, that came to me was that's what God is sweeping away. The people, the people matter who were swept away, but what God is in, in big terms sweeping away is, is the, the weapons of war and even the systems and things like that that are being hmm. pulled, that are, that are what cause these things like in the ancient world slavery, well even in our world, right? And so I got the sense that that is the thing that is, that, that, that is a, that for, from in the looking at the print, that's an image of all of our human violence, all of our entrapment with that stuff. And of course, what's coming to me in my heart and so much of my prayer time right now is focused on the Ukraine and what's going on there. And, and so it came, it almost came through really loud and clear that it's, it's it, you know, the weapons of war, the systems of violence, the false narratives we tell about, mm. you know, what is it, you know, what, you know, all these reasons we give for hurting one another and killing each other and, um, 
and it's it's hard to explain all of it, but it it comes back again to you know the Isaiah's words that are always that are have been with me so much the last few days of he will beat the swords into plowshares, mm -hmm. and the spears will be turned into pruning hooks, and that the image that God provides is no war and violence will come to an end, and that is an ultimate hope of ours, and it's so hard right. to see that. And so in some sense, I never thought of it this way, that when God is sweeping away Pharaoh's army, God, and, and, the, and the liturgy of the Passover say this, in the Jewish tradition, God mourns those deaths. God doesn't yeah. want to have to do that. But God is setting the people free, these slaves free, and also eventually the, the, the whole Passover and Easter is going to be the sweeping away of all of that, mm -hmm. that causes it. So that's what we're looking for at, towards the end of Lent is when we get to Holy Week and the cross and the yeah. empty tomb. That is the big picture, you know, hope of it all. Yeah. Which, yeah, so it struck me very profoundly, that one, that the, that the weapon itself is what's... Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so I don't, yeah. It's kind of a lot to unpack, it was with that one whole thing, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting because that's what I was drawn to. Is it really? That weapon yeah. being held up yeah. out of the water. Yeah. It's like his life was being swept away. Right. right. He was drowning, right. but he's going to save the weapon. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's going to hold on to that weapon. Yeah. And number one, I was drawn to the paradox of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's. Mm -hmm. All these people dying, the mm -hmm. horse as well as the, mm -hmm. the horsemen were, mm -hmm. were being swept away. They were being killed. And, and there's Miriam singing her heart right. out, right. leading other people who are rejoicing and singing. And right. with all that's going on in the Ukraine right now, um, this story and this picture just touched my heart. But I was surprised that that's, that's what mm -hmm. came to me was the weapon. So I was really interested in hearing mm -hmm. what insight you had, which, which is different than what, mm -hmm. what I received. But what you received, the insight you received, enriches what and, I did. And the same, receive. because when you said it was that the clenched fist of holding on to it, I was like, yes. That we, it's so important to us, which is, I think, yeah, it's a piece it's, that those things are something we value. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for me personally, yeah. I think how great our need is to be right, mm -hmm. and how easy it is to to just take our opinions, our views, and ram them home mm. to try and convince, change somebody else. And, and sometimes we can do it with such a vengeance that we just keep on shoving, mm. just keep on pushing harder and harder verbally. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not Usually talking about verbally. picking up right, right. weapons here because I'm talking about my own life and right. I don't right. wield weapons other than my mind and my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't dismiss, I can't dismiss that image too easily mm -hmm. because there's things about myself that it's like, well, I told you so. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to get yourself into trouble. Mm -hmm. If you would just change, this wouldn't happen. You know, mm -hmm. it's that whole prideful, yeah. uh, if you only thought the way I think, right. if you right. only believe the way I believe, right. you wouldn't be in this mess. You know, those right. kinds of attitudes. And I'm seeing that in the weapon. That even when I'm floundering, I can be, I can be prideful and arrogant, mm -hmm. and I don't like seeing that in myself. I wanted to focus on Miriam and the tambourine, <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, 
I, th I think this was a good um, illustration for people who may be new to this kind of thing with Lectio Divina or Visio Divina. Um, sometimes what the another person receives will enrich mm -hmm. what you have received. Right. That, that is just a powerful, it can be a very powerful thing if you're doing this with someone else. Right. Um, and as you said, we are, we are doing it with other people. We are doing this, yes. And so please do share your own comments and uh, if, you, if you want to record them and talk about them in video and post that link or something, that would be great. And, yeah. You know, kind of really create a community of us who are doing this practice together during Lent. It's been, it's mm -hmm. been rich these first two weeks that we've done, so. It yeah. has. I, I've gotten a couple of phone calls, but that's a sharing between one other person and myself, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. not the actual um, sharing with this online community. I'm hoping this develops into an online community mm -hmm. and, and people will feel more comfortable with sharing some comments. Yeah. Um, that would be wonderful. It would be, yeah. It would be really cool if we could that do that. That would be exciting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, Kathy, thank you. Again. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you. We hope that um, you will join us again next week. And may your, may your Lent be a very blessed time. Um, we pray for the blessings of each day. May your, may your Lent be enriching and May it speak to you at whatever your point of need.